We are now talking to long snapper and podcaster Joe DeLeon. What's going on, Joe? Not much. Thanks for uh, taking the time to have me on. It was interesting getting to hear your <laughs> hear your thoughts on the Trevor Lawrence Jets situation. I didn't I didn't realize Jets fans were this frustrated, but I can I can understand why. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, you play college football, and I, I will right. this. You're a podcaster, and I'm sure you're talking about this. And 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 believe it or not, we're a live radio station out here, and all the different shows. A lot of people are sticking up for the Jets. A lot of the people on our network are sticking up for the Jets. But other networks, they will all, Stephen A. Smith, you, you listen to Max Kellerman, what a joke organization. Why would they try to win the game? They should have fired Adam Case. The reason why you kept Adam Case was not to win games. All this crap that you're hearing, and you see that these players are actually working and playing for this coach. Nevertheless, if you don't like Adam Gase, you hate Adam Gase, and Adam Gase is the worst coach in NFL history, history which he is. Um, the players are still playing for him. So, Joe, how are you and your family doing with this pandemic? Uh, not doing too bad. Hiring for finding work and stuff like that's been a little bit complicated in the sports media sphere as nobody's really hiring full time right now. But just trying to hang in there. We're, we're almost around the corner and I'm sure everything for everybody right now is going to be getting better sometime soon. Well, I, I will tell you this. I never talked to you. I never talked to you on the phone. I never I've ever seen any of your shows. But I, I'm going to definitely listen to you. You know why? Because you have a great radio voice. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. do, man. <laughs> and uh, you can see that you're professional and you know. And I, I, we're going to get into some football conversation. We will talk about the Jets with you and Trevor mm -hmm. Lawrence. But first things first, tell us a little bit about your college career. You now are done with school and you're still uh, looking for a job in the NFL as a long snapper. Tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, I was a long snapper at the University of Rhode Island. I first started playing when I was a freshman. Uh, originally was the backup my freshman year, had no expectation of playing, thought I was redshirting, even considered transferring at that point. Starter ahead of me gets hurt, and then I start the next 39 consecutive games. And when you start 39 straight games, you start to you know build that consistency, really settle into the position. And that was my big calling card when I finished up the – finished up my career at URI, was that I was consistent, that I was always going to get the ball where it needed to be. I never had any issues. Maybe it wasn't the best athlete like some of these other guys that were a little bit more high priority, but I was always on point, consistent, right where it needed to be. When I started out in the in the you know the draft process, the process of becoming a UDFA, um, I, you know, I wasn't entirely sure what to expect. I honestly had no expectations for how good I was. I wasn't really sure because I hadn't really gotten a ton of feedback. But as I started to go through it and I started to realize and I was going to different various events with other guys that were in my in my uh, draft class that were part of the you know the long snapper group, I was starting to realize I actually have a, a, you know somewhat of a shot to do this. I ended up signing with an agent, um, you know, had some minor communications with a couple of teams. And I think I would have had an opportunity to possibly have gone to maybe a rookie mini camp. Um, had there actually been rookie mini camps, but because of, of COVID and the pandemic, those things were canceled. So act those activities were canceled. I had the opportunity to go to local days. Those were canceled. I had a workout schedule that was canceled. All that stuff was completely taken out from under me. I'm not bitter about it. It's just everything that, that happened. The good thing about being a long snapper and being a specialist is there's a long window, a much longer window to make it into the NFL in some of these other leagues compared to other positions. You'll see guys that are four or five years even removed from playing in college that will eventually get that opportunity down the line. One guy that I point to, Joe Fortunato, who he had an invite to be on the, the Cowboys roster for training camp. And I think he was there very briefly, but he's four years removed from playing at the University of Delaware and snapping there. So I'm still optimistic. I just had surgery to fix something in my pec. I'm still trying to get back and you know where I need to be in order to impress some of these scouts. But I, I know that it's a long journey. It's not like I'm a running back and my my time frame is done. I'm still working towards that opportunity to keep playing. So, Joe, you you mentioned how long it is, how long your career can mm -hmm. be as a long snapper, and also the, the the gap between it in terms of the the training. I guess you come straight out of college the way it was. Um, explain that kind of process even further. And also the process of how you became a long snapper. Is it something that came overnight? Is it something that was mm -hmm. you trained on when you were in high school? And again, 
how do you how how valuable do you think it is because it's a longevity position? The team you cover now, the Giants had a long a long time one with Zach Diossi. The Eagles had one with John Dornbos for a long time. So go through that whole process. I was originally a center it. when I was in middle school, and when you're an offensive lineman in middle school, everybody's the same size, except uh, when you're Rashawn Gary, who I faced when I was in middle school, who was the same size he was then as he is now. He was oh. six foot five, three hundred pounds when we were in eighth grade, but. When, when you're an offensive lineman in, in middle school and you're playing center, you get really used to that snapping motion. And I always took a lot of pride in being good at doing that. I get to high school, I'm not as big and as strong as some of the other guys on my team. So I then started to shift my focus and in, in realizing I take a lot of pride in being consistent, just snapping shotgun, just five yards. And I was already long snapping, but not with the, with the proper professional technique. I was just one handing it like you see a lot of high school guys do. As I started to realize if I put the work in and I, and I bust my butt here and I really work towards this, I can have the opportunity to earn a scholarship and play in college. And that was exactly what happened. Worked really hard, had that opportunity. Yeah. So, uh, by the way, we are talking to podcaster, uh, long snapper, hopefully very, very soon in the NFL, Joe DeLeon. Now, Joe, let's, let's move away from long snapping. Let's talk about a little bit about your, your podcast. What made you decide – to start radio. I mean, a lot of people want to do a podcast. Everybody and their mother are doing a podcast. I mean, you can step <laughs> back and you sit there and my grandmother's sitting there and she doesn't know how to use the machine, but she's talking on her phone. She has a podcast, but uh, I, I, everybody, but what made you decide, you know what? I, I love talking sports. I love talking football. I love talking life. I, I, I want to do a podcast. I want to put a podcast out there so people can listen to it. I started out really early on knowing that I wanted to work in sports media when I was in high school. I wanted to be like Mel Kuyper and Todd McShay. That was what I was aspiring to be. Or Matt Miller was another guy that I looked up to. And as I was starting to work towards that, I, I knew immediately where I was going to play football had to have a journalism program. And as soon as I got to URI, I did as much as I could to get involved. I started a sports media club there. I picked up and, and a buddy of mine, they had just built a state of the art recording studio for for audio recording people were using it to record music but me and my roommate who was an offensive lineman at the university of rhode island his name sean anderson he also he currently works for sirius xm he also works in the audio industry um we just decided to hop in there goof around and figure out how to do it and that just one thing led to another us consistently doing that eventually after doing it for a year reaching out to the believe podcast network and offering to do a show with them uh, covering FCS football. That then just led to more and more opportunities as I've reached out to people here and there. Now I work for SB Nation. I cover the Giants. And then additionally working with Locked On Podcast Network, which I, I started back in November. Well, I will tell you this. Our, our producer over there with his smirk on his face, as soon as you saw that, you heard the Giants, the little smirk <laughs> on his face. I mean, it, it, I wanted, if I could take a shoe right now and throw it through my screen, I would do that. Okay, Joe? I would do that. <laughs> so go ahead, Speedy. Ask away about the Giants because I know you're waiting to say that. Yeah, I was just going to ask about just your whole journey with that now working for the Giants. I mean, what have been some of the, the memorable things so far? I mean, this has been a season that was – I mean, we expect them to be kind of bad. They're really a little better than expected, but again, a, a nice young team that they've got going now. I mean, what are what are some of the takeaways that you've had, and what are the, some of the specific things you've done with the players, with coaches so far in your for your articles for your podcast that you've done so far? Mm -hmm. Yeah, a lot of the the content that I produce is mostly audio, but I, I do actually do from from time to time. I consider myself the the resident special teams expert with Big Blue View, so I'll <laughs> I'll typically do a lot of special teams breakdowns. I I literally just did a video last week. If anybody wants to go check it out, talking about how the punt coverage umbrella works and why the Giants right now are, are struggling to cover punts. Um, a lot of that stuff, though, is mostly film breakdowns, just breaking down film, giving my takeaways. The In terms of those takeaways, though, one thing that I really noticed about this Giants team is they can build around having a really good stout defense led by a very strong defensive coordinator. I don't think Patrick Graham is going to be a defensive coordinator that tries to leave after a year. I think he's going to stick around for two two to three more years until he reaches what he's hoping to achieve with this team. As long as they can get Saquon Barkley back healthy, they can effectively run the football. I don't think this team needs Daniel Jones to be like Patrick Mahomes and play hero, bar. He does, hero ball. He doesn't have to be Lamar Jackson. Uh, he doesn't have to be Kyler Murray. He just needs to be consistent. I keep saying that if he becomes Ryan Tannehill in three years, that is perfect for me because Saquon will likely stick around. If he stays healthy, he is – 
a superstar running back than, that can lead your offense. And I, I know that sounds crazy in, in the modern NFL. You've got some teams that are are moving towards creating passing offenses and, and moving away from star running backs. But Saquon is one of those few players that I really believe this team, if they can get him back, he's back healthy, their offense can flow like it's done over the last few weeks with him taking those carries. As you guys know, we are talking to Long Snapper, a podcaster, the, vo I guess you could say he works for, um, uh, I'm sorry, SB Nation, right? SB Nation yes. for the New York Giants, uh, Joe DeLeon. Now, Joe, you, you speak about the Giants, and I am not a Giant fan. And I, I'll sit here, I'm an analyst, so I love what Joe Judge is doing right now. I think he's sensational. He gives them a different... Um, a different breath of fresh air, something that the Giants haven't had since the early days of Tom Coughlin or Bill Parcells, the angry, outgoing, I'm going to tell you what it is, and I don't give a crap what you think. That's that's who Joe Judge is. And I, I love what he did with this defense. This defense has played well. Uh, he fires the uh, the um, um, the um, the line coach, the offensive line coach, and, and there were stories coming out from the New York Giants organization uh, that they were fighting. But I don't believe that was true. I never thought that was true at all, by the way. But uh, it was just a funny story because everybody in New York wants to find something to attack something about. So my question to you. You were talking about Saquon Barkley. I interviewed Saquon Barkley before he was drafted. I met his father. He's a diehard Jet fan. Diehard Jet fan. Saquon grew up in the Bronx, and he's a diehard Jet fan. Now, this injury, this significant injury, he tore his ACL and MCL. This is a bad injury for a guy that has really big legs, like tree trunks. I'm talking about Mike Tyson type of legs. And this guy runs through offensive lines. That's what he does. That's his strength. And he can do things on the outside that a lot of running backs we haven't seen since really uh, the, the first or two years of, um, Cur uh, I'm sorry, Gurley. So why do you think with this significant injury – that you think Saquon Barkley will come back and be at the top of his game again? Well, one thing I, I attribute for him coming back at, at full speed, this isn't like the, you know, even the early 90s or way before that when an ACL was a, you know, a death sentence. Modern medicine, I think, is at a point where you tear an ACL, these guys hop right back in, they're able to get back out there. Now, I know it's not a, an entire complete guarantee that you're going to come back at full speed. But the guy is a physical freak. He is a physical specimen that we haven't even seen at really any position. The way that he's able to move at his physical size, I have pretty good confidence a guy like him is going to be able to recover pretty quickly. And he, he's been banged up. He was dealing with his ankle injury last year, and he recovered way quicker than I think everybody expected. I, I have high expectations just based on who he is as an athlete because he's an elite athlete. He'll be able to come back at full strength, no problem.